Let's let's call our Longfellow School Building Level Advisory Committee meeting to order um, uh, tonight. Um, so I'll try to facilitate where necessary. Um, I think I'm trying to think. Uh, maybe tell me how you did it in the last meeting. It seems like the easiest thing to do would be to just kind of. Uh, have any real order? Did, how did you do that at the last meeting? Um, I think it, at that meeting, uh, the chair actually just took attendance um, silently by looking at the screen and seeing who was there. And then um, we'll pass that on to uh, the Harriman team. Um, so okay. we could do that or we could do, we could just name who's here. Okay, I can, I can go down the list of um, let me just get, see if I can pull up the list of who's on the committee. And here we go. So I'm going to just read some names. And if you're there, unmute yourself and, and uh, tell us. And if I miss anybody, let me know with us. Luke Truman, you could say here if you're here. Uh, Emily Surway. Here. Thank you, Emily. Um, Joe Carter. Here. Uh, Lori Davis. Here. Jeff Levine. Hi, Lori. Je Jeff Levine. Yep, here. Uh, Bill Dodson. Terry Young. Here. Uh, April Fournier. Uh, Eva Human. Chris Gray. Ian Hardcastle and Trisha Switzer. Did I miss anyone? Here. Thank you, Trisha. Um, did I miss anyone? I don't think so. And then um, I know we have various staff. Um, do you want me to mention those names or do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Javier, I'm Javier both. I'm a superintendent. Um, Steve, can you introduce yourself? Hard to hear you, Steve. Uh, you're, you're muffled, Steve. Um, uh, we know you're here, Steve. Hello, yeah. Steve Stilfen. Hi, <laughs> Steve. That was better. Anybody else? I'm just trying to look from the uh, Doug, public schools. Yeah. Doug uh, Sherwood, I see. our facilities coordinator, is here, and um, Henry Guillaume, our um, uh, videographer, is also here. And then we have uh, from the architects, and yeah. what, do you want to introduce yourselves? Go ahead. <laughs> sure. Mark Lee with Harriman. I'm Lisa Sullivan with Harriman. Emily Lois with Harriman. Did we miss, I think we got everybody. Yeah. I just that Roberto uh, said he's listening in as well. Oh, okay. Um, Thank you, um, Roberto. Thanks for joining us. Um, uh, I'm trying to find the agenda. And um, we'll put it up in a minute now. Um, uh, do approval of minutes, and you can go ahead, Mark, and um, probably put the, that slide up for Henry, and um, that will also help by putting the agenda up. There. Okay, so we'll, we can do the approval of the prior meeting minutes. Has everybody had a chance to uh, look those over that wanted to? Take that as a yes. Um, is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes from the last meeting? I'll make a motion to approve those meeting minutes. Thank you, Joe. Is there a second? I will second. This is Emily. And who, Emily, okay, thanks, Emily. Um, then uh, any discussion on the meeting minutes? Seeing none, I guess I have to go down the roll again. Um, hold on a second. I've got to, <coughs> uh, let's see. So voting members, I guess we'd have Emily. Yes. Uh, Eva. Yes. Uh, Jeff. Yes. Joe. Yes. 
Lori. Yes. Uh, Lisa or Lisa, committee member. Uh, Trisha. Um, let's see. Ter uh, yes. Trisha. Uh, Terry. Yes. And I think that I miss anyone who's uh, not staff for the architects. So I think that's unanimous. So I'll turn it over to Javi or you or, or the architects. Um, uh, Harriman will take it from here. All right. All right. Thank you, Councilor Malvinonis. Uh, and thank you, Longfellow Building Level Advisory Committee, for joining us tonight. We um, are going to, we've, we've been sort of, uh, our agenda is to go through a detailed, more detailed discussion about what the scope of the renovation includes. And so we've been kind of dealing with the scope from at a high level uh, in terms of what is going to be in and what the budgets are and how do we get to these budgets. And so now we're going to really start to dig down into some of the detailed discussion of what's included in the renovation work. And so that detailed scope is, discussion is going to be um, a little bit heavy on the uh, text side. So if uh, uh, we'll, we'll try to get through it as uh, sprightly as we can here and uh, uh, and then get to a, co a conversation on, on alternates. And so um, an alternate um, is something that didn't make it into the, the basement that we may be able to fund if the pricing comes in favorably and we have additional funds to be able to award. And we design it at the time that we're going through and designing things right now, which is why it's a very timely conversation for us to have. Uh, and um, and then uh, and then at the end of that, we'll just kind of quickly uh, uh, cycle back to um, where we are on the project timeline, uh, and in particular when our next meeting is. And so we have about an hour, a little less than that now. We've got about 50 minutes, and so we'll try to be efficient here. Uh, we try to extend the meetings a little bit longer so that uh, we had more time for every for everyone to participate a little more fully. So. Um, the uh, conversation on, on terms of what an alternate is, uh, the way we've been presenting it is, is it sort of, um, if, you, if you think about going out to, to a restaurant and you were pay for your entree uh, and that came with, um, you know, a certain amount of, of food, and let's say that there's a dessert or um, a salad or something that's additional to the entree, well, that's, that's an alternate priced item. And so that's kind of the way to think about it, that we'll, we'll Sort of the base bid is is sort of what we um, are asking to be priced as sort of the basic absolute uh, will be part of the project and the alternates are additional items that we ask the contractor to price separately at the time uh, that they're bidding on the project itself and in terms of uh, the uh, consideration for what um, we're going to be asking this committee and and its role uh, in the alternate discussion with the scope of items that is um, we, we put together a list of, of items that, um, that we understood sort of didn't make the, the list of um, uh, improvements that we wanted to make that uh, were originally identified with the BFOF. And so some of those items are listed as alternates that, that we just uh, weren't able to fund initially. And so, um, and then um, we're going to collectively review those tonight as a committee and we're sort of a, a develop a prioritization. What 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 do we think is more important than uh, on the list, and what is le maybe not as important? And so so we we sort of have uh, have that conversation now. If there are other items that we we uh, that people are thinking of, hey, have you thought of this? Uh, certainly, we, we want to bring those up tonight and and have a conversation on what those might be as well. Uh, with respect to, to this listing, what this in the prioritization of this, this is information that uh, we'll also then bring to the DABC uh, and school board uh, in the future. So if we're uh, lucky enough that the pricing comes in favorably and that there is additional funds uh, from either the contingency uh, that we've got established as part of the project set aside for Longfellow or the contingency that may be set aside for Reiki or Presumpscut as well, uh, it'll be up to the DABC and the school board to understand uh, collectively from the different um, scopes what uh, and the information that, that is coming forward from this committee, 
uh, in terms of what the priorities are. It'll be ultimately their decision to understand what additional scope may be um, awarded as part of uh, the contract um, as that, that uh, we're identifying as an alternate. So that's, that's the, the um, aspect of how our conversation tonight fits into the discussion about will, uh, how will these things make it into the project uh, if there are funds available at the time that we, we bid the project. So are there, um, are there any questions on what an alternate is or this process? Are we asking people to put hands up or just uh, raise, uh, uh, speak out if they have a question? Um, we've been in the previous meetings using the hand uh, raised just because it's hard for you to see everybody um, otherwise. Yeah, makes sense. So if anybody wants to, has a question at this point, please uh, raise your hand. And um, I think Mark and Javier are co-hosts, so they'll be able to um, uh, call on you. Yeah. There are no hands uh, raised right now. Not seeing any. Okay, great. Great. All right, well, here we go. So um, here's the, an axonometric of, of uh, a uh, sort of um, model, computer model of what, what Longfellow School looks like. It's, um, and so we're you know, uh, right now looking along Stevens Avenue um, in the corner that faces Deering. And, um, and so what, what this doesn't have is it doesn't have the ground plane, so it's just the building mass, if you will. And so you can sort of see on the side that faces Deering that uh, there's a uh, side door. Um, and then you'll see the uh, current kindergarten rooms on the first main level. Uh, and then on the lower level, you can see these little windows that start off as very, very small windows, and then they get a little bigger at the um, bay that uh, projects out, and then even um, bigger still as they get down. Uh, and as you all know, that the sort of the site slopes down on that side. So by the time we get down to, to what is shown on the left-hand side as that gray um, block, that's the proposed addition. So right now, we're and, and we'll look at that in floor plan in a minute, but that's uh, that's where we're proposing the floor plan would go at two levels. At the lower level, we, we uh, don't like to call it the basement. Um, at this level, it actually is a daylit space. And so uh, it actually has, has sort of um, opportunity even for egress uh, and a door at the, um, at the back of the building right here. And then the space over that's shown as just a roof because it's identified uh, going up against the current retaining wall uh, from the courtyard. Uh, that would be the uh, cafeteria, and so um, and so that's that sort of gives you kind of an overview uh, of it. And you can almost you can also see the the elevator uh, poking up over in the corner of the courtyard, right over here where the hand is as well. So it gives you a sense of of what uh, the three dimensional picture of the building looks like. And the color coded floor plan, we don't expect that that you can make out necessarily the uh, space is very uh, easily in terms of titling. Uh, the um, I, the imp importance of this slide is that they really the color code. So the, the green, the mint green is the new construction. So that's what we we're just talking about over on the corner um, on the lower level. It starts on the lower level and goes up to the main level. Um, and what, what it comprises of is uh, the cafeteria. Uh, there's a corridor. There's a stair right now that separates and the, the space adjacent to it is the mechanical room. So that's the stair. And then originally uh, we had shown that there would be toilets here and, and what and looking at it, I think we had, we had the conversation last time, but there are uh, a couple of uh, special services that are located right now in the space that has those very, very tiny little windows. Uh, and so the conversation has been um, that they're approximate same size as the space that we had set aside for toilet rooms. And so, wouldn't it make more sense to put toilet rooms where we don't don't need windows and that we're not occupying, uh, and that are that are more um, uh, below grade, uh, and and then put those learning spaces where we have natural light and the ability to open windows, uh, and so so that's right now what the plan um, is considering. It's flip flip those two pieces, uh, and um, and we think that makes a lot of sense, and so. So that, and then the different colors that you see, so the blue is, is heavy renovation, uh, where we're gutting out the space and, and uh, creating new spaces. The uh, dark gray uh, is um, 
uh, a um, uh, level of renovation that's uh, not not heavy. Uh, so we call that light renovation. Uh, I guess in some in some respects it's it, it's medium too, but um, but we'll call it light renovation. And then the very light gray is um, a very light renovation. So there's almost no work in those spaces. Uh, and so um, and um, and so you can see that there are some storage rooms, electrical rooms. Um, that are and mechanical rooms that are, are getting much in the way of, of uh, work in them as well. So that's the lower level. We're going to now move to the, oh, I'll pause here if there's a, a hand up. Yes, thank you. I just had a question about the cafeteria new build. Um, on slide five, where you could see that it's kind of looked like maybe it was flush with the retaining wall. I was just curious, will the roof of that cafeteria or new construction be um, flush with like the garden or is it going to be higher or lower? Yeah, it, 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 thank you. It, it's actually going to be up higher. So it'll, it'll actually uh, go up above that and, and it'll be such that we are careful so that it's not easy for somebody just to climb onto the roof from the courtyard itself. And so, uh, and so we're studying right now just exactly how tall that is, but as a big space, we want it to be, and because it's, it's as anyone's been into a, a, a school cafeteria, uh, that volume of energy uh, in there, we, we want as much volume as we can to kind of uh, handle the, the noise that's in it. So, um, so we, it'll, be, it'll be taller than a standard height space. Okay, thank you. And another, another thing to note too is the three-dimensional model that you're seeing of the addition is, is just showing the massing, so sort of the volume of the space. None of the architectural articulation has been applied to this model for the addition yet. So there will be windows and, and, and doors that you will see in the next iteration. So, and then just... Uh, um, oh. This is long. Oh, sorry. Um, I have a question. Yep. This is Laurie. Um, energy efficiency of the new construction. Will that be meeting green building standards? Yeah, Lisa, you want to take that? Absolutely. So we've been working closely with Thornton for the study to review all of the Portland projects right now for um, lead compliance, um, uh, silver uh, certification level. So the new build will be compliant um, and we're working with them to work out the details of, of how uh, we're meeting those requirements. Okay, thank you. And so this is if we looked at that uh, building model, we sort of just sliced it away. So you can just kind of see how the spaces line up a little bit. Um, and um, so uh, there's uh, right now, uh, we believe in, in that area next to art is ELL, Gifted and Talented, and uh, a reading program. So, Mark, Mark, I see Jeff's got his hand up. Oh, yeah. You saw it. Please, Jeff. Sure, uh, just building a large question. Has anyone looked at the uh, proposed referendum? For the fall that would change the building ordinance and how it might affect the three projects? I haven't, so. Right, Jeff, we're, we're just starting to, to dig into that a little bit. Uh, and so um, to see, uh, you know, the timing of when this goes out and the design of this and the uh, <clears throat> impact that, that those, um, uh, uh, that the legislation would have on this project. So I, I don't, uh, I haven't looked at it in any uh, significant amount of detail at this point. Okay, uh, it's good. And as you have questions as we go along, please um, feel free to raise, raise your virtual hand. Uh, so the main level, uh, again, we, we see the uh, addition of the pre-K uh, stairs and the corridor. And um, we, um, uh, then you also see the heavy renovation in blue where it's the toilet rooms uh, that are used by students. Uh, and then the, so there's uh, locations on each side of the, the wings. And then the faculty room uh, with the installation of a new toilet, uh, new toilets along the hallway uh, adjacent to OTPT and the nurse area. Uh, and then the reconfiguration of the vestibule 
uh, with the administration desk next to it uh, and the principal's desk coming over here. Uh, and so those are the spaces. Uh, the library gets uh, a more um, uh, a heavier uh, renovation um, in some of the casework and finishes in it. Um, and then um, we have reconfiguration of some of the spaces uh, in the uh, directly across from uh, what is as uh, currently uh, some of the meeting room space. And so that those areas where we see blue as where we're, we're configuring the spaces differently than they're con currently configured. And that's with the exception of the library. The library configuration is staying uh, predominantly as it is. So, um, and, uh, and then the dark gray is um, upgrades throughout the building with the uh, abatement of hazardous materials and new finishes. Uh, and there's really no space on this level that, that uh, as you can see, that's light gray or very light renovation. And so that's what that looks like as a three-dimensional view. And then finally, the upper level, the second floor, it has the elevator addition with, and then the creation of a corridor in what is currently a classroom uh, over that uh, has shared uses right now, uh, individual user toilets, a resource room, and then the upgrades to the bathrooms, and then uh, the classroom uh, renovations as well. And that's what it looks like in three dimensions. And with that, uh, we'll go through um, this. And so each of those color codes uh, corresponds to the description that we're going to go through. And, and as I said, we'll try to be efficient about it. Uh, at a certain point, uh, you're going to get tired of hearing me, and I'll pass it off to my colleague, Lisa Sawin, to take over. Uh, and so uh, here we go. So the whole building, that's every space in the building, um, regardless of the color, will get a public address system. So we'll have that. Uh, and it'll be zoned for the building itself. So there'll be some areas of the building that uh, can have a different message than other buildings. And, and that we're seeing in safety and security now where you may have different instruction for people uh, in the event of an incident, um, but it certainly can act as all building uh, public address system as well. We'll have new data uh, cabling and, and wiring. We'll have new clocks uh, in the classrooms. We'll have an upgraded uh, sprinkler system throughout the building. Uh, the fire alarm system will be upgraded. We'll have security cameras throughout as part of the safety and security system. Uh, also as part of that, we'll have an access control at the exterior doors uh, that allows uh, a um, uh, monitoring uh, as well as the uh, programmability of the access to the exterior doors of the building. We'll provide ADA compliance signage throughout the, the school. Uh, and then also in the theme of uh, ADA, we'll have the new elevator. Um, we'll also be providing exterior lighting upgrades. And through, um, throughout the building, we'll be replacing the outlets with uh, tamper-resistant outlets, which is a code requirement now as well. So those are all, all over the building. The, uh, as we start to look at specifically the light renovations, and that was down on the lower area, um, it'll be, um, and so this is, again, Remember I said that, that sort of the uh, heavy renovation is blue, light renovation is the darker gray, um, and very light renovation is the very lightest gray, but the light renovation really is kind of a misnamed uh, because it really is more than just light renovation, but we're going to be removing the existing carpet. Uh, we're going to be taking out the uh, vinyl asbestos tile that's underneath the carpet and then providing a new rubber floor with new wall base. The casework, we're going to be replacing the casework in the classrooms. Uh, and including um, the um, uh, areas of casework that have asbestos-containing materials. We'll be providing new casework uh, in, uh, in the classrooms and uh, look to incorporate um, as many of um, the needs of, of the teachers as we can. And so we're trying to, to at least match what there is currently for uh, casework in each of those. And, um, and including we'll have um, a, a sink in each of the classrooms and our old standard was to put a, a bubbler and a faucet on it. We'll certainly have a faucet and it'll be a touchless faucet. And we're also now looking at ways that we can do the bubbler as a touchless uh, feature as well in that. So uh, we'll also uh, only be providing the unit ventilators. And those are the, the mechanical units that go in the outside walls that bring in the fresh air. 
Uh, we'll only be doing those in areas where we're impacting the layout. So the majority of them right now are not shown to be replaced. Uh, we will be abating the um, existing uh, acoustic plaster ceiling in the building, and then we'll be providing a new acoustic ceiling system. Uh, and, um, and that will require that we have a, a soffit at the exterior wall because those nice, beautiful, tall windows that we have uh, require that they, when we drop a ceiling in, we want to make sure that we provide access for all that nice light to get into the, the building itself. So with, with the new ceiling, uh, we'll also um, have um, new lighting as well. And so I think uh, we'll show that on the next slide. But, uh, and, uh, and so uh, also keeping in mind that the casework, we're going to be very sensitive to the sense of, of the um, historic nature of the, of the building and the period in which it was built. Uh, and so, um, so that will play into how we uh, uh, choose finishes uh, uh, for the casework itself. And so, as I said, there'll be new lighting and new outlets in the classrooms. Uh, there'll be, as I, I we already talked about from the plumbing, it'll be a new sink inside of a, a cabinet and counter. Um, and then, uh, obviously, all the walls will get a fresh coat of paint, um, we'll, and we'll have a new instructional surfaces, we'll call them. We'll have new uh, tactical surfaces. We'll have new write, uh, whiting, whiteboards for writing surfaces, uh, and, um, and those are magnetic as well, so they not only allow for writing on, but they can use this to post things on. And then short throw projectors uh, so that we can eliminate the tripping hazard of cords that are currently um, uh, all over the floors in Longfellow. So that's what's happening in the classroom. So they'll walking into what will feel like new classroom space when we're done from a from the um, finishes perspective and the technology uh, and the light renovation in the hallways um, will also take out the flooring and the ceilings and we'll put down new rubber flooring which is a quieter flooring material easier to maintain uh, and we'll put the uh, new ceilings in with um, light fixtures and so again we'll be sensitive as we think about ceilings in the corridors to really think about the sense of the character of the building uh, and, and making sure that we're sensitive to that uh, as we select new uh, fixtures and finishes. Uh, and we'll um, be looking to paint the walls above the current glazed tile. Um, we'll be uh, providing uh, new doors at certain locations where we have um, reconfiguration uh, and um, we'll take out the existing drinking fountains and install new ADA uh, fountains uh, with bottle fillers. And again, like in the classroom, we're looking at ways um, in light of COVID that uh, we can find uh, touchless operable uh, water coolers. And bottle fillers are certainly touchless, but uh, the idea of doing um, water coolers, it would be as well. Yeah. And um, the um, walls in general, what we're doing is, um, a metal stud wall, which uh, I will have drywall, and we use a abuse-resistant drywall, so that uh, it uh, holds up to the uh, constant uh, wear of um, uh, of uh, backpacks and student traffic more so than just a standard drywall. Uh, and then um, for doors, we are specifying a laminated glass on the and a solid wood door, so we use a solid core to the wood door, um, and um, so it's a it's a heavier, and it also assists with sound isolation. But then we, uh, for the vision panels in the doors, we use a laminated glass, which takes two two glass that are quarter inch thick glass, and they laminate it to a scrim in the middle. Uh, that uh, and the reason we do that is is that it um, provides, if, uh, say, there's a uh, an incident in the in the building and someone were trying to break into a classroom that the film actually prevents them from easily getting through it so it takes takes a, a while to actually be able to break through that um, barrier that's that's laminated between the glass in order to get entrance into the classroom itself so that's just a safety security feature uh, we'll put safety hard safe uh, classroom security hardware on the doors as well uh, and then at the exterior doors uh, we will use a um, a uh, product which is uh, uh, durable, such as an aluminum with a thermally, thermally broken, just means that it, it uh, breaks the transmission of cold from the outside to the inside. Uh, we will have um, uh, access controls we discussed at the exterior door. 
uh, at the entrance vestibule will also have a higher grade glass than the laminated glass we're using for uh, the classrooms. And that entrance uh, area glass is, is a school guard, it's called, it's a trade name. Uh, and, um, and that has uh, an even heavier layer uh, between the glass itself. It's a more expensive glass, but, but it's a little heavier to do, which is why we put it at the entrance. Uh, it will be again giving giving fresh coat of paint uh, everywhere, and um, and in certain areas, we can and, and everyone who knows knows Longfellow again knows that there's there's some lovely uh, paneling in the building uh, and uh, woodwork, and so we're being very careful uh, where we impact that to um, restore certain areas or replicate certain areas to again maintain uh, what we all love about the building. So uh, I'm going to then allow uh, folks to stop listening to me a little bit and have Lisa uh, take over. We're, we're about a half an hour away from our conclusion of the meeting here, so just kind of keeping a, a little bit of an eye on time. But Lisa, I'll let you take mm -hmm. it away. Absolutely. Good evening, everyone. So I'll try to be efficient so we reserve time to have a, a good discussion at the end here. Um, I will take you through the heavy renovation scope items for the ADA compliant single user toilet room. So um, essentially we're providing ceramic uh, floor tile, ceramic tile wainscot, um, and new fixtures. Um, and uh, there will be, um, we will at the existing restrooms, uh, abate the plaster ceiling and replace with moisture resistant gypsum board ceiling. Um, in the teacher's room, uh, we will uh, remove the existing carpet and or vinyl asbestos tile and mastic and provide a new tile, uh, rubber tile floor uh, with a six inch base. Um, and for the ceilings, uh, we will provide a new um, suspended acoustic ceiling uh, system with new light fixtures and um, abate the plaster ceiling in that space. And then at the library, um, as Mark said, essentially we're doing um, some uh, replacement of materials, essentially. Uh, the configuration will remain the same, case will remain the same, but we will be replacing um, uh, the carpet um, and uh, providing uh, new carpet and, and rubber base in that space. Um, and the reason for that is there is uh, a vinyl asbestos tile and mastic underneath that existing uh, carpet. So wanting to make sure make sure that we get that out of the building and uh, properly uh, dispose of. And then at the admin and nurse, there will be a new um, uh, uh, configuration and location for the admin and nurse. We'll provide carpet in the, um, I'll clarify here, we'll provide carpet in the admin space, not necessarily the nurse space. Um, and walk off mass at the entry, um, and we'll provide uh, tile floor and wainscot at the nurse toilet area. Um, the casework will be provided uh, as on the floor plan. What that means is the admin um, desk area will have casework that goes along with it, as well as storage areas in the nurses area. Um, the security windows. So We'll provide a secure window um, and a new uh, security vestibule. Um, and so the overall vestibule itself uh, is what we call, it will be hardened essentially. Um, you won't be able to visually see that, but that wall between the admin and the vestibule will have um, safety glazing in the transaction window, as well as the actual wall will have what we call armor core, which is a Kevlar, uh, essentially a Kevlar uh, layer within the wall. The ceiling in the space will be a acoustical um, suspended ceiling system with new light fixtures. Um, and we will be providing a side-by-side -side washer and dryer uh, in the nurse's area. Next slide. So the detailed scope items for the addition. So the areas that we are adding at the back of the building, um, the cafeteria and pre-K spaces, these will have the um, uh, rubber tile and a six inch rubber base. And so the rubber tile again is a, um, a softer um, resi resilient tile. So it actually helps with acoustics. It's softer um, when standing on your feet all day um, uh, when compared to the uh, VCT tile. 
there'll be a walk-off mat at the um, uh, doors um, in that area. The new exterior walls, um, the basis of design, have a exterior cladding, which will either be a brick veneer or a high-performance concrete panel. And so what that is, if anyone's seen the additions we've done over at Lysis, there is a gray panel on the front of that building. That is the concrete panel we're referring to. Um, and then we'll have the makeup of the wall. So the, air, the barriers, the gypsum wall board, the studs, and the insulation. Um, and the windows uh, will be insulated with aluminum storefront system with dual pane low glazing, uh, suspended ceiling and light fixtures. Um, and we will provide um, uh, glazing along the south interior elevation, allowing visual connection from the cafeteria to the corridor. Um, and then the um, acoustical wall panels around the perimeter of the cafeteria to help dampen um, uh, the acoustics in that space. And we'll provide new, um, obviously, painted surfaces and new areas um, and provide cooking, uh, or not cooking, warming equipment for the warming kitchen. Any questions before we yeah, move on to conversation about alternates? I don't see any hands raised, Mark. Okay. Great. So what, um, what we've talked about as uh, including uh, in alternates uh, are um, one thing that we've, we've observed as we've gone through several of the schools and also it's the case uh, in some locations in the hallways at Longfellow are areas that become pull-out spaces. So oftentimes we'll see tables uh, and chairs out in the hallway and that is for one-on-one -on -one work or um, there's a, a need for a student to work independently. And so what we did at at Lyseth was included an alternate for what we, we called them classroom wing nodes. But you can see in the picture in the lower left, there's um, a green green wall that, um, and then there's a, a yellow wall in the distance, but they're, they're labeled with four and five. But they are an intentional organization of a counter and seating area with pinup space uh, that provides just a little bit of uh, definition around that ability to come uh, pull out of the classroom and do work uh, in in this um, uh, zone of a quarter. The character of him would look differently for Longfellow because again we're, we've got a, a building that has a little more of a historic feel to it but um, it's really to provide the amenity of an intentional space for the pull out work uh, to occur and um, and so that's it has uh, a writing surface as well, so it can you know, a whiteboard and tack surface, and so it really becomes kind of a, a learning uh, aspect outside of the classroom. And in addition, it provides identity around uh, various classrooms. And so uh, one of the things that it does is then students start to identify with an area of the building as being uh, kind of the home base of, of where their classrooms are. So it may be themed around grade level or maybe themed in other ways in the building itself. So it's wayfinding as well as a learning space in and outside of the classroom. The other important feature of that is um, in, in this example at, at Lysis is the Rulon acoustical wood flat system. So not only does it provide sort of the definition, the this node for the definition of this space, but then the addition of that material really helps to mitigate the acoustics. So you do have a little bit of acoustic isolation in that space by bringing the volume down, adding that surface. And just to reiterate what Mark said, the wayfinding as well as the identification, especially for young kids, is really important um, because it really gives them that sense of home. This is my space. This is my location. I identify with this area within this school. And it really um, uh, helps them, um, especially when they know where to go in the school, um, but also in the transition to different grade levels, knowing that they're going to move to this next area in the next year. Um, so that's also very helpful in that way as well. The interior doors, and so some doors are shown to be replaced, uh, but not all doors. And so the alternate uh, scope would be to replace all the interior doors with new doors, uh, security glass, and uh, the security hardware. The security hardware is something that we that they currently have. They would just upgrade to the most current classroom security function locks. So 
uh, just a, a higher, it, what it does is also it updates the appearance of the building in some way. So the, the doors get more wear and tear than other finishes in a building. So that they get to, to more distressed over time. Uh, and so in addition to, to providing the safety glass in them, they would also create a freshness in the appearance of the uh, interior of the school as you walk through it. The other uh, consideration is new unit ventilators. And so uh, everyone remembers that that was one of the items that we had wanted to include in the scope, but it kind of slid down below the line because we didn't have funding to include it. And so this would add it uh, into the mix as well. Uh, and so, um, and then as you can see from uh, the photo here, uh, the existing masonry is in really, really um, tough shape on the north side of the building predominantly, uh, but in, in a few areas. And so uh, it would be repointing uh, the, the brick on the outside of the building, as well as uh, reparation of some of the cast stone panels. And that was originally called for in the uh, scope, BFOF scope. Again, that's that's an area that uh, for cost reasons didn't, didn't, didn't sort of make it into the base scope of the work. Uh, that also means replacing the lintels, and so those are lintels are, are the uh, load carrying element above the the grills that bring in the fresh air. So if you looked at the building on Stevens Ave, you'd see all these grills in the classrooms, um, and above those, carrying the weight of the brick are these steel lintels that rust over time uh, and create um, problems with the exterior uh, envelope of the building. So the next items are uh, digital controls. And so when the building was built, the state-of-the-art technology was using air, um, an air system with a compressor uh, and uh, to control mechanical equipment. And uh, now it's all done electronically. And so it would be to replace all those pneumatic controls with electronic ones uh, and, um, uh, and then windows. And so the unit ventilators, I think, is a... Uh, uh, the, in addition to the ones not replaced in heavy renovation. So that, that I think is, is uh, overlap of uh, what we talked about before. But then also windows, one of the things we heard loud and clear from, from uh, the teachers is the ability to open and close the windows. And so that's another uh, alternate is the adjustment of those uh, safely open and close windows. So with that, we want to open it up and have a conversation about what the committee feels um, are some of the higher priorities of those items that we've listed uh, and some of the things that uh, uh, maybe are lower priority. Again, people, put your hands up. If, uh, there, there we go. Mark, you gonna call on people? Uh, I guess uh, I, I can do that, or if you wanna do it, um, Councilor Mavidos, you can, you, you can do that, facilitate that part. Sure. Um, Eva, you're up first, followed by Jeff. Thanks, Nick. Um, so during the last meeting, I thought that we had talked about windows being included in the base bid. So I'm just a little confused why it's an alternate now. Yeah, the, the, um, the mechanism uh, uh, that we're looking at in terms of replacing those is um, uh, a little bit more... Uh, price than what we originally had identified. So, um, so that's why, and, and now that we've added in the addition of the, um, uh, the uh, cafeteria and the um, pre-K addition, we've, we've sort of starting to adjust where that line is and trying to, to um, ensure that we can afford the addition. Uh, and so the, the windows slid over to the alternate uh, consideration. So is the alternate consideration just to um, modify the windows to make them easier to open or to replace them? Yeah, just, just to modify them. The cost of, of replacing them is, is a much, much larger number than to, to replace the mechanisms that help uh, them slide open. And then just one last question, sorry. Um, I recall us talking about looking to see if they could be adjusted to made to be easier to open. Was that looked into and confirmed that that can happen? We're still investigating that, okay. Eva, so we haven't quite uh, concluded that, that item yet. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Eva. Uh, Jeff Levine? Thanks, and uh, thanks. This is a really exciting set of um, 
projects. So uh, it, it's uh, I know it's hard to make these decisions. I'd love to include all the alternates. I would put in my two cents for the unit ventilators and for the three point being another um, repairs to the exterior of the building because it seems really important to make sure that at the basic core of it, the building is a healthy building. Um, and ideally, I'd agree with Eva on the windows. I I put the ventilators a little above the windows simply because they're so important for our circulation in that building. Um, but like I said, I'd love to include everything on the list, so it's, it's tough. Do we have any, uh, uh, thank you, Jeff. Do we have anybody else who uh, is interested in speaking questions or weighing, uh, weighing in? I am not seeing any. Um, so what, uh, Mark, what do you guys uh, need from, from this group tonight? Yeah, I think what, so the, the uh, feedback has been very helpful in terms of understanding the importance of, uh, I think, you know, J Jeff said it'd be nice to have all of it uh, put in there, but um, the, um, so we're going to, we're going to, uh, what we, what we heard was that the unit ventilators were important, the windows were important, and the masonry, exterior masonry was important. Um, and so I think we're going to look at those as being, being sort of um, moved up on the higher side of the priority uh, than the uh, other items that we were looking at on the first place page, which was the doors and the classroom nodes. And so, um, and so um, that right now, and, and what if, what we said in our last um, uh, meeting was uh, at, uh, uh, at Reiki, if those who are uh, uh, on the call right now have thoughts that they haven't shared, they can certainly send them uh, to the chairs uh, of this um, committee. So um, if they want to send them to Nick uh, or Marty, that's um, certainly um, appropriate, and then they can get those to us. And so, um, but right now what we'll do is we'll act on the information that, that has come forward with, um, with the items that I just identified as being a, a higher priority. Uh, Eva, thanks, Mark. Um, Eva, your hand is up still. Is that left yeah. over or do you have another question? I did have another question. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> um, I was curious about the unit ventilators, if any work is being done on the ventilators to prepare the buildings for the reopenings, if there would be any of the work on the ventilators is already being addressed, I guess. I was wondering with... Yeah. Steve, can you speak to that, please? And also to the windows while you're at it. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, yes, work uh, PMs are being done on all the ventilators at Longfellow as we speak. Nearly two thirds of them are done now. Opened up, filters checked, motors checked, the pneumatic systems, all of the controls. Um, so there have been completely uh, preventive maintenance has been completed on them. Um, and the uh, we're in the process now of making sure that um, windows that we have lined up to replace at a standard now in the COVID world, to make sure that a minimum of one window would open in all classrooms. In the case of Longfellow, um, and also uh, Deering, for example, there may be more than one in a classroom that will open, but we are repairing, adding new balances so that the windows will, at, at a minimum one, will open before we open here in the next two weeks. And then we're replacing a number of windows as well. We're replacing numbers. Yeah. Thank, so thanks, Steve. Manufactured now, and we should have them in the next week or so. And so, a new and then window. Ionizers on the Univents. We're starting a program with ionizers, cold plasma generators at um, the Reiki School and all Univents, and we're going to extend that throughout the district and in all of our event systems. So uh, we're collecting numbers, we're getting ready to move that to bid. And once we get that through, we will purchase those and get them installed, but also not only in events, but throughout the districts and all of our air handling units in the return trunk to supply side, we'll have uh, these cold plasma generators, which will really, really scrub down the air. So. Um, we're making positive uh, steps in air quality. Thanks. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Um, Mark, I have a question in terms of, um, and I, I would say in terms of guidance on the, uh, the alternates, I would, I guess, tend, 
I, I think it would be great if we could do them all. And, uh, but I think uh, I would tend to probably agree with uh, Jeff's assessment um, primarily. Um, are, are all of the uh, alternates going to be put, put in as add alternates? To, or So they'll all, I'm seeing you nodding, so they'll, they'll all be there. And is, will there be another opportunity once you uh, have more information and we have more information um, to weigh in on this? And um, I guess I'm just asking because we think we have a sense of, of those here this evening, but you may have more information at, at a later date. Is that something that you anticipate coming back to the group for some guidance on? Yeah. I, thank, thank you, Nick. They, as we get uh, right at the um, point of getting ready to go to bid, um, th th certainly there's an opportunity to, um, to consider them. What we, what we wanted to do is reach out to everyone right now to understand the sense of uh, what uh, their feelings were on them and if there were other things that people thought of um, that, that would be, may want to be considered as part of the, um, as an alternate as well, uh, scope of work. So, um, but absolutely, we'll, we'll have an opportunity to adjust the priority uh, as well as uh, consider them uh, in, in the future before we go to bid. Great, thank you. And, and, and again, I, I really like those uh, nodes, but I think some, I think we have to look carefully at some of the systems and, and more uh, building envelope structural uh, issues. Um, Emily has a hand up. Go ahead, Emily. Um, I'm a visual learner. <laughs> and so every time I see, you know, a, a slideshow, it's, it's wonderful. And this work looks incredible. But if it's important to you for us to prioritize these, is there any way that you can make us sort of like a Google form that we can uh, fill out and literally prioritize them from one to however many this is, so that you get a real sense of exactly what we value. And then um, you've got some more empirical uh, data to work with rather than me trying to remember everything that you just said and then prioritize it, which doesn't work for my learning style. So, so thank you. No, that's, that's, I think we, we have just the person to put on the task. Uh, our, uh, our survey expert, uh, Emily Wah, is smiling right now. So, uh, <laughs> so definitely we can, thank we can accommodate that. Great, good question and good answer. Um, I know we're getting close on time. Are there any other uh, questions or anybody want to weigh in before uh, we move from this? Not seeing anyone. So Mark, I think you're all set. Great, and so just uh, again to uh, understand where we are relative to the timeline, we're in the um, August uh, timeframe right now. So we're in our construction documents, uh, and um, and then uh, right now we're still gearing up for November bidding. Uh, so we have uh, about three more months uh, digging through this um, aspect of the project, and and now it starts to get into uh, the um, we we bring all these ideas and scope ideas and, and are constructing our uh, model and our documents, and so uh, we'll be able to share visually how some of these things are taking shape, uh, especially those visual learners out there, that'll be great too. Um, and so we're gonna continue for the, for the next three months on our cycle of uh, the fourth Thursday of the month with the, this building level advisory committee. And it um, um, in there, we've got to figure out our next public forum. And so that right now is, uh, was shown to happen in September. We just got to figure out the, um, uh, right uh, timing for that at the uh, start of school with everything else going on, it's not the right time to conduct a public forum. So we'll let, let the, the sort of um, uh, year get underway uh, and then uh, we'll pick, we'll sort of uh, work together to figure out the right day for our next public forum, bring everyone up to speed uh, on, um, on what uh, uh, has gone into the project so far. Um, and we've, we've now started our process to get the planning board uh, applications um, all uh, pulled together and submitted. So that's uh, ongoing. And, um, and so our next, uh, next meeting uh, is uh, Thursday, September 20, and somebody had pulled it out uh, earlier. The fourth ring a bell. That does sound about right. Uh, Nick, so absolutely. 
and uh, and we've been cycling through um, the uh, times, and so um, and and we've extended it to an hour, and it seems to be working a little bit better to try to not rush through the content. So that uh, that part of the uh, uh, the meeting it seems to work pretty well. This meeting will be first next time, so we'll be at five thirty. Five thirty. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. Five thirty on the twenty fourth. Um, and uh, there, there we go. Uh, and uh, um, and then there's a DABC meeting scheduled for September seventeenth. That happens the third Thursday. So um, and uh, and with that, we have about uh, two minutes left. So anybody have any last burning question or anything before we wrap up? I am not seeing anyone. You ready? Uh, we all set to adjourn then? Very good. Thank you, everybody. Um, Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll see, see you next you. month. Thank you. Thank you.